from the Aria Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Marketplace. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2018. There's, I don't know how many people are here. 60,000, 70,000, your guess is as good as mine. I'm sure we'll get an official number shortly. We're kicking things off here, the three days of coverage. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, actually I guess four days. And we're at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience here at the Aria. Uh, and we're excited to be kicking stuff off with Rajiv Dutt, he is making AI that makes AI. We're going to get into it. He is the CEO, president, and co-founder of Dimensional Mechanics. Rajiv, great to see you. It's great to meet you. So, uh, first impression, how many uh, reInvents have you been to? Uh, this would actually be my second. Your second? My second, yeah. It's like, um, it's, uh, I, I, I always feel like really energized after coming here. It's, it's like, uh, last year was like heavy AI centered. Right, uh, right. It was, uh, it was just really, all these sessions in AI, it was really exciting. So let's get yeah. into it for the folks that aren't familiar with Dimensional Mechanics. What are you guys mm -hmm. all about? So, Dimensional Mechanics is about lowering the bar for entry to most, like, to most people. So that's kind of our first focus. Our second focus is uh, to make sure that deployment strategies allow you to deploy across any end device. So it's basically intended to be a, a complete end-to-end -end capability. Um, around AI. Around you AI, yes, of course. The, 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 really the major artificial part. intelligence. The artificial intelligence, yeah, yeah, yeah. the most important part. Most, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's about reducing the bar for entry for artificial intelligence so that anybody without, without even a machine learning background uh, can build very sophisticated models um, on our platform uh, in sometimes as little as 14 lines of code. It's just uh, incredibly easy. Uh, we've had high school students use us. We've had uh, university professors who have nothing to do with AI use us without any problems. Um, and uh, the, it's really the way we do that is that we have an AI that we call the Oracle. Uh, we are all Matrix <laughs> fans. Um, and so what this, um, the Oracle does is has, it has a vast knowledge base, has uh, a lot of additional machine learning components and things like that, that essentially allow it to adapt and learn based on the kind of problem you're trying to solve. So every time it solves the same problem, it gets better and better at what it's doing. So, so um, is it is it libraries? Is it pre-configured? Are there a specific type of application that it that it works better on? Wh which kind of so, your go-to-market? So basically, uh, think about AI Studio as a full server application. So it uh, what you essentially do? We created our own language called the NeoPulse Modeling Language, and the NeoPulse Modeling Language. Think about it as sort of the sequel for uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it does a lot of uh, very complicated things in just a couple of lines. Um, so essentially what you do is you compile it uh, on the machine. You, so when you write uh, the NML code, the near post modeling language code, uh, you compile it on the machine, it, it looks at your data which is sitting in an S3 bucket, um, it tra starts training the model, once the model is ready, uh, you can export the model as a PIM object, so a portable inference model object, which is one of our uh, creations. And that allows you then to deploy it onto end, any end target as long as it's running our runtime. And our runtime can be basically uh, sitting in the cloud uh, or on a device. Uh, sometimes and we're also looking at uh, right down to FPGA kind of device levels as well. So extremely low power devices uh, as well as cloud uh, computing. But it gives you that flexibility. But it also, which is really important, um, it makes AI accessible. So right, right. anybody without uh, like any background in it. Uh, my wife is a radiologist and she's actually uh, looking at using it for her, uh, like for her own internal. But how much do you projects. have to learn? You have to learn the the NeoPulse language, right? The NML uh, language is really easy to learn. So we had a high school student who spent about a week learning it, and so a week later, she was ready to start coding, and she had built her first models uh, using that. And the way it does that is that you actually there we have a keyword auto inside NML, which is context aware. And so when the compiler sees auto, it goes out to the oracle and says, hey, I've seen uh, uh, there, this person needs help building an architecture or uh, figuring out what function to use or what hyperparameters to use and so on and so on. And uh, the, the oracle will come back and say, hey, use this architecture, uh, use these hyperparameters, use these um, settings or functions or these optimizations in, in uh, your model. And so is that doing that when I'm setting up the model in the first place to give me direction? Or is it looking at the model once I've spun it a couple times and saying, 
wait, this looks like one of these, maybe so, you should do some of this. So what it will look at is your data. Uh, so it will actually look at your data, the type of data, how much data you have, the kind of problem you're trying to solve, um, how many, for example, if it's a classification problem, how many classes you have, um, and all of that basically determines the kind of model that it will use. Um, you can also specify the level of complexity that you're interested in, like uh, are you interested in a very simple model, a complex model, um, is overfitting a risk, it'll, all, it'll determine all these things behind the scenes. Right, right. Um, based on the kind of problem you're trying to solve. And um, the first time it solves it, it will give you a pretty good answer. Um, usually, uh, it's, it's, it's usually very good. Uh, but then the second time you solve it, or third time you solve it, it gets better and better and better, because right. it, it's able to learn from its mistakes. So, uh, and eventually it gets really good at its job, so. But it's still, but it's still a model that I built for that application. You're not, you're not drawing kind of pre-configured models no, down no, it's, from it's, the it's, Oracle. No, no, you're, you're basically um, training it from scratch. Right. Um, it's entirely intended for um, custom models, uh, so, Companies that are have highly customized data, um, like radiology, or for example, looking at wing stress patterns, uh, like in polarized light and stuff like that. So things that are not normally covered by the standard image recognition, uh, and and so using things like transfer learning or fine tuning doesn't help in right. the, in this particular case because if you've trained a model on dogs and cats, then like training it to recognize stress patterns in a, in a hull, it's, it's just not. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. So you got on the, preparing for the interview, I was looking through your website, and you, you list a really dramatic uh, example of right. where using your guys' technology was like, I don't know, a tenth of the price, yes, and yep. I think one month versus six or yep. something along I wonder if you could share some customer sure. examples that you know people are putting this to use. Oh yeah, so uh, so we have actually a few. Um, so one of them is with a, uh, was it with a company, uh, they're focused on um, uh, kind of a resume matching. Um, so we built them, they were initially quoted by another company uh, at around 450,000 and they were warned that they would not be able to exceed 40% accuracy given the data that they had. Um, we managed to get to about 83, 84% accuracy for about under 10,000. Um, so that was like a huge, huge um, right. reduction. Um, then the second one was just uh, recently, another company had been uh, spending quite a bit of time and resources um, on building out a, uh, a technology to measure heart rate. Um, we were able to uh, look at that and produce, instead of spending like their 20,000 a month or so, we could bring it down to 4,000 in total. So these are the kind of sort of dramatic reductions in costs that our platform can offer. Um, we, uh, Stanford University, another great example, uh, these are physicians that we're working with. None of them have any engineering background. Like, for them, it's like, uh, Linux is in itself. Right. They, can't even, they can't ever operate the Outlook probably that was, half the time. That was, that was <laughs> the hardest thing for them to do is to get used to Linux. And uh, so once they, once they start building on our platform, it was like uh, they actually built a model that was good enough that they were able to publish at the RSNA, which is like one of the biggest radiology conferences in the world. In this case, it was for PET CT, so which is a three-dimensional uh, uh, model, so it's a three-dimensional image, if you will, okay. of the human body and so was able to determine whether somebody had a tumor or not. And I think they managed to got, get, with a very limited data set, about 74, 75% accuracy. And this was actually at Stanford, so it's a pretty pretty big name. Right. So, Rajiv, we're here at the, at the AWS Marketplace Experience. Right. Um, you're still a relatively small company. I think you said you had a good size seed round, getting yeah. ready to go out and get a, get a decent A round. Right. What does it mean to work with a company like Amazon? I mean, as a small yeah. company, just to get yeah. just to get uh, an approved vendor yeah. uh, set up at Stanford, yeah. probably not an easy, oh, yeah, not yeah. an easy thing, right? They're risk averse. You don't, exactly. you know, there's all kinds of legal T's and C's. Exactly. Like, as a startup, they're always right. worried about whether you're going to be around tomorrow. Exactly. So you're partnering with AWS. So how's that been working with AWS well, in the marketplace team? Well, firstly, a it's definitely given us the Amazon uh, uh, backing in a way. So when people see or in AWS, if they see that connected to you, that automatically gives them a little bit more confidence. Right, so that like they vetted you, so exactly, it must be good. Exactly, um, And the second is that it gives us access to a market that we otherwise wouldn't have had. Like, if I'm thinking about like producing software that you have to download on our website, that's a very, very limited market. Um, it, you have to attract people to your website and so on and so on. 
now it's like we're on the Amazon, uh, they have, there's a machine learning hub in, in, on AWS. We're on that, so which means that when people search for machine learning, our name does come right, up. So right. it means it's very easy, it, it's very easy to launch. You don't have to worry about uh, setting up a machine, worrying about how to configure it. Everything is done automatically. It makes life really easy. Right. So, um, and uh, on, on top of that, um, the AWS team has been, uh, the marketplace team, has been really um, extremely helpful connecting us with end customers. So very often, they will refer people to us. In fact, one of our largest customers uh, came through an AWS referral. So uh, for us, it's been nothing but a win-win. Right. For what about the potential downside? Not to not to rain on the parade, but you know the old joke used to be if you're a startup making widgets, you know you just got yeah. your first order with Walmart. The good news, bad news is you just got your first order yes. with yeah. Walmart. I mean that's yeah. opening up a huge global distribution opportunity. I mean yeah. in theory, yeah. you know say you got a thousand customers oh, tomorrow, yeah. that might be a little bit of a challenge. Yes, yeah, so we actually are starting to hit that. So uh, we um, so our version two was really our go-to market version and which came out early this year, and so we've been trying to like ramp up the sales on that side. And literally in the last three months, we've had a deluge. It's like, I have not been home for six weeks now uh, because I've been in the Far East and traveling, and it's like, and it's because of this heavy customer um, uh, interaction at this point. So we have a very good story to tell the investors now. Like, uh, this has also helped with the investment rounds that we're right, actually right. looking at. Uh, so we have a very good story to tell the investors that you know our uh, our, li our like invoice list and so on is huge at this point. So we need help now. We it's actually more about raising like building up a team now right. than than it is about uh, can we get orders. Right, it's really delivery more than sales. That's exactly. What you're yeah, and so we need to build up a delivery team. We need to. Uh, I mean, it's it's fairly intuitive, but at the same time, it's a new technology, which means. As with any platform play, you're building up a team of evangelists, support individuals, uh, right. uh, and so on. And there's going to be a marketing component as well. So we haven't really driven marketing that much. Uh, AWS has been great in, in kind of doing uh, some of that for us, but um, we need to, of course, very actively go out and market. And right. We haven't had that capacity yet. All right, well, we look forward to watching the, uh, the story unfold, and great. thanks for spending a few minutes with yeah. us. My pleasure, All thank right, you. Rajiv, thanks, thanks. Thank you very much. All right, he's Rajiv, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the AWS Marketplace and Service Catalog Experience at the ARIA. Come on by, thanks for watching.